Hi, today I'm going to talk about the second uh, important mechanism for JC macroeconomics. Basically for macroeconomics, the big difference between macro and micro is that for macro, it is 50% content and 50% application. So the challenge that a lot of students have for macroeconomics is that they're not able to understand the content and the content is always linked. Uh, thus, they're not able to see the linkages, they'll get confused. So for macroeconomics, how to be less confused is always good to, to have some mechanisms or some flowcharts or mind maps that they can have at the back of their mind so they can help them see linkages easily. So for my lessons, I usually go through three kinds of mechanisms that students should understand understand thoroughly okay so the first mechanism is the investors confidence mechanism what affects investors confidence it is almost impossible for a student to go through a macroeconomics uh exam paper without even mentioning and writing about investors confidence because the component investment is a very component that actually links adas sras and all the various aims and problems together i have a video on that so if you want you can just check, check it out the second mechanism is what i will go through in this video it is the exchange rate mechanism okay every time when you see an exchange rate change you will think of three things which i'll go through today with uh, one to two examples that has been tested in the case study to let you appreciate how this mechanism will help you answer questions more effectively and the third mechanism which i'll go through in a later video it is the interest rate mechanism in fact these two when you learn that these two mechanisms you will have actually effectively understand how monetary policies work okay Okay, so let's just get it started. Okay, come. So every time you see an exchange rate, you think of three things. Okay, so let's talk about exchange rate. You think of three things. So for example, let's say let's talk about the SGD. Okay, the Singapore dollar. Okay, it has depreciated. When exchange rate goes down, you think of three things. One, you think of price of export, price of Singapore exports in terms of foreign currency. You think of price of imports in terms of local currency, in terms of uh, uh, SGD. And finally, you think of price of imported inputs in terms of local currency. So, when the exchange rate falls or when the exchange rate depreciates or when the government devalues the exchange rate, the price of the country's export in terms of foreign currency, satirist parameters will fall. Assuming the PDX of the export is more than one, this will lead to a increase in export revenue. Okay, uh, why? Because export revenue is price of exports times quantity of exports. So, for example, let's say the exchange rate goes down by minus ten percent. So all things equal, price of export goes down by minus 10%. Assuming that the PDX of exports is 2, okay? What happens is that the quantity of exports okay, will go up by 20%, okay? I'm going to minus 2, okay? So if you look at that, price of exports minus 10%, quantity of exports goes up by plus 20%. So export revenue will go up by plus minus 10 plus 20 is plus 10%. Okay, so that's how it works. So similarly, when an exchange rate goes down, the price of imports now in terms of SGD will be more expensive. Okay, so assuming that the PDM is more than one, this will lead to a decrease in import spending. Okay, using the same, uh, 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 what do you call it, mathematics, you can actually derive it yourself. So the combined effect of an increase in export revenue and a decrease in import spending will lead to a increase in net exports and then you link it to AD. Once you link it to AD, you can link it to the various aims. You can link it to actual growth. You can link it to a decrease in cyclical unemployment.
Okay, you can link link it to an increase uh, improvement of your trade balance. Now, so that is a good thing when exchange rate goes down. However, there's always a counteracting effect. So the counteracting effect is that when exchange rate goes down, it also leads to an increase in the price of imported inputs in terms of SGD. Now, this will then lead to an increase in cost of production because the imported inputs are actually factors of production. This will then lead to an increase in SRA, uh, sorry, a decrease in the short run average a short run, short run aggregate supply curve leading to an increase in import push inflation now can you see that uh, when you have this exchange rate depreciation with these three branches effectively you have already they are able to always see two sets of story this is the positive okay this is a positive impact of exchange rate devaluation or exchange rate depreciation this is the negative impact of a uh, uh, depreciation of the exchange rate uh, so with this mechanism you will then be able to a student will then be able to actually uh, answer a question uh, showing two sides okay and showing that there's an economic analysis and showing that it is a balanced argument okay so for example uh, okay, maybe let me clarify a few things. Some students they might get confused about what's the difference between price of imports and what's the difference between price of imported inputs. Okay, always remember the price of imports here. We are talking about the imports of output. Okay, of other countries' output. Okay, these are known as your final products. So what are final products? They are basically products meant for consumption. Okay, products meant for consumption. So for example, when a Singaporean buys a, a Toyota, okay, and a, a Toyota car for consumption, right? From Japan, that is considered as import. When you go to the the, the shop in Orchard Road and you buy a, 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 a let's say a, a luxury bag from overseas, right? A Louis Vuitton bag that's uh, import, okay? Uh, imported output, so it's considered in the price of import. However, this we are talking about imports of inputs. What are inputs? Inputs. These are actually intermediate products, okay? These are products that you use to produce other final products. So, example like crude oil. For example, like your manufactured components, okay, these are all imported inputs. You don't buy crude oil for consumption, okay? Companies buy crude oil to refine oil to produce petrol for cars, okay? So, so you just have to remember that there's a difference between price of imported inputs and price of inputs. This affect AD. This affect SRAS, okay? So now with this. As trade mechanism, you are able to answer quite a few questions. For example, let's take a, few, a look at this. Now, discuss the impacts of a depreciation of the SGD on the economy. So, even without looking at the case study extract, even without looking at it, okay, you can almost with the exchange trade mechanism, you are you are pretty prepared to write two sided answer right because discuss the impact it means that you must show the positive impact and the negative impact the positive impact is that ad will increase because of an increase in x minus m the negative impact is that sras will decrease because of an increase in cost of production so if you look at this so this is basically what i talk about in mechanism the mechanism that i described earlier in terms of words in terms of words right so you can see when sg dollar depreciates okay uh price of exports now is cheaper again okay? assuming that pds more than one export revenue will go up okay now price of imports now is more expensive assuming that pdm is more than one import spending will drop combined effect will lead to an increase in net export revenue AD will increase and you always link it to a economic aim which is actual growth okay now what's the risk okay you can talk about the macro conflicts between actual growth and demand pool inflation 
Okay, or you can just talk about having uh import push inflation. Can you see that import push inflation? Okay, then of course for eight marks you always do a over evaluation. Over evaluation, you can always use state and nature of the economy. Okay, and the nature of Singapore is that we have very very little natural resources. Okay, so because of that, we would actually uh risk. Uh, import push inflation or you can actually from here it says that because Singapore okay has very little spare capacity thus risk or demand pull inflation might not be high okay so another case study will be this okay for example explain why a yen depreciation might lead to a boon for the Japanese economy. So we're talking about the benefits of the Japanese economy. Now this is why, so you just need to see the benefits. But if I change this to a six marks question, and I then I change this to discuss whether, then you have to show the other side, which is that Japan may risk either demand pull inflation or import push inflation. So hopefully with this exercise, okay, when I show you the second exchange rate mechanism, Okay, it will help you a lot. When you see exchange rate changes, you think of three things. You think of how it affects price of exports in terms of foreign currency. You think of how it affects price of imports in terms of local currency. And finally, you think of the price of imported inputs in terms of local currency. So hope this exchange rate mechanism will help you in your revision for your exams. Thank you.